Good morning everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Michael for Ford Truck Enthusiasts and today we are checking out the third generation F-150 Raptor. So diving into the review here, I want to ask the question, in a world where the Ram TRX, T-Rex, whatever you want to call it, exists, in a world where there are two different F-150s that are slightly quicker to 60 miles an hour, is the Ford Raptor still special? Is it still the Ford F-150 Halo truck? What do I mean by that? Well, let's start under the hood here. This is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, but not just any version of it. This is the high output version with 450 horsepower and 510 foot-pounds of torque. But for context, Ford now offers the Power Boost, the hybrid drivetrain system, which takes the standard output version of this motor and it adds a hybrid electric motor component into the transmission area, which boosts the power of the standard one to 430 horsepower and 570 foot-pounds of torque. Also, there's the new all-electric F-150 Lightning that's going to be available later this year. In that one, depending on which battery you opt for, you're getting up to 426 peak horsepower in the lower battery, or the 563 horsepower with the extended range battery, both of those trucks offering 775 foot-pounds of torque. And of course, we've got the Ram TRX making 702 peak horsepower and 650 foot-pounds of torque. All three of those models, two of them Fords, one of them from a, a competitor, making more power than this one and are quicker to 60. And so that is what I wanna focus on is that does not being the number one king truck of horsepower and specs, make this off-road Baja style driving luxury truck any less special. Let's discuss. Checking out our specific loaner. Now what's important to note is that we actually have a 2021 model. So some of the pricing may be different. That tends to happen from a year to year basis, especially during these crazy times. Starting MSRP on this one is just over $64,000. Add in a bunch of options, destination delivery, and this one specs out for $82,080. This includes equipment group 801A, the Power Technology Package, the Raptor 37 Performance Package. This is the first production truck to have 37 inch tires from the factory. And of course, the Tough Bed Spray and Liner, which we're sitting in here. So going over a few things that are included with each of the packages, this is not gonna be everything, but just kind of a few highlights. So Group 801A, you're getting the B&O Unleashed Sound System, which is an 18 speaker sound system. You get speakers in the headrest, speakers in the ceiling, speaker everywhere, it generally sounds really great. Integrated Trailer Brake Package, the Tow Tech Technology package, 360 degree cameras, interior work surface, convenience package, power tailgate, pro power on board, and of course the tailgate step and the tailgate work surface, which we've seen on F 150s for a little while. Moving on to the Raptor 37 performance package, of course, getting 37 inch tires. These are BF Goodrich all terrain tires in the desert yesterday in the Angeles National Forest. They were absolutely terrific, really hooking on all sorts of different kind of sandy and hard rock terrain. And to go along with those 37 inch tires, you've got 17 inch forged wheels. You're also getting the unique blue interior. So it's blue interior, Recaro bucket seats, heated and ventilated, though not massaging, with some kind of orange accents throughout. Visually speaking, the third gen Raptor isn't terribly different from the second generation. And that's primarily because the second generation was already a pretty wild version of the truck. They separate it from the standard F-150s by making it lighter. It's got these DOT amber lights in the front and red ones in the back, these massive fender flares. But, you know, there are a few updates that come with this one. Specifically, you got the nice LED lighting, although it doesn't go down into the bumper like the standard F-150. You've got the massive Ford grille up here, which is a signature Raptor piece. You've got your sticker packages that are available that have been available on every generation of Raptor. Despite not being a massive departure from what's come before, I think the truck still looks wild and mean and aggressive at all the things that we can expect from a Raptor. And with this particular one, our loaner here, this is the 37 package. It puts a uh, some map and uh, stopping points from the Baja 1000 off-road race down in Mexico. So super cool to have that kind of heritage built in. Or if you're not into stickers, you don't really have to get the stickers as well. You could kind of go for more of a sleeker, sleeper look. Speaking of which, I do have to say, if you guys watch the Auto Vlog YouTube channel, Mike, the owner of that particular channel, has a third generation Raptor and he just had his painted by Town & Country Ford, which is another huge Ford-based YouTube channel. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. And they kind of paint matched the fender flares and a few other things to kind of make his lead foot gray example look more just kind of black and gray. Very clean, very elegant, and I do have to say I prefer that to kind of the factory setup of having 
gray accents everywhere. It's a little bit busy for my tastes, even though it's wild and mean and aggressive. All right, folks, checking out underneath the third generation Raptor. What we can see here, obviously, is our adaptable Fox shocks up front. Just massive suspension components. Look at these control arms, they're huge. We've got skid plating to protect the engine and transmission. Here is our 36 gallon fuel tank on the driver's side. And here is the updated exhaust for the third generation. See this little loop, people call it the trombone. And this is what Ford did to make the exhaust equal length because the driver's side header comes down here, right? So this adds extra length. And then so Ford added this trombone loop to the passenger side to make sure that the exhaust is the same length from each header out to the back, which gives it its unique signature tone. Here we've got the muffler, massive drive shaft, rear end with 410 gears, solid rear axle. Uh, we've got these extra braces coming forward. My apologies, I forget what these are called. Uh, and then another set of massive, I mean, good God, look at those shocks. And you've got coil springs as well. This is not a leaf spring truck. Um, and uh, there is the dual exhaust coming out there and your full size spare tire. On the inside, the F-150 Raptor third generation is a lovely mix of luxury, sporty feeling, and practicality. What do I mean by that? Well, with the Raptor, of course, you get these auxiliary switches that you can wire in, so toggle switches to add in extra lights and all that sort of stuff. You've got Sync 4A with this nice big screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both wireless, XM, Sirius. The display here is really snappy, crisp and clear, 360 degree camera. You've got a digital gauge cluster that is customizable and can show you your off-road modes. It can show you your fuel economy and all those things. You've got a leather wrapped heated steering wheel with these nice metal paddle shifters. You've got all your drive modes here. So to, let's go through those. So normal is the standard one. If you go left, there's sport, tow haul, and slippery. And then on the other direction from normal, if you're going to the right, you get deep snow and sand. Next there's this Baja mode, which is four high trash control is off and it actually turns on the front camera which is something you don't really see with 360 degree cameras and then the last mode is rock crawl which is a four low mode also on the steering wheel the right three buttons you've got three buttons to control your steering feeling so there you've got normal mode comfort mode sport mode and off-road mode shocks settings you've got normal sport and off-road and then for the exhaust you've got quiet normal sport and baja mode with the 37 package you get the blue interior with kind of the orange stitching amazing amazing seats i think they might be the first heated and cooled ford recaros uh, i might be wrong about that but regardless they're kind of a microfiber suede so it's like something out of a mustang nice bolstering but not too tight and they're heated and ventilated awesome awesome seats very very comfortable you've got the b and o sound system interior work surface so you put your gear selector down and now you've got a laptop working screen here from the center console you've got plenty of cup holders wireless charging usb a and usb c in the back you've got a deep center console here you know it's not necessarily full-on luxury if you you know compared to like something that the japanese or the germans would do but for a truck just really really nice it's it's basically to put it it's kind of like a a, a mid-level king ranch or a platinum not necessarily a full limited in in how fancy that it gets but otherwise it's a supremely practical place you can fit five adults in here no problem there's storage under the back seat there's storage here there's cup holders everywhere this makes it just a do everything truck this is something that you can you know commute with run errands pick up the kids go on a road trip and of course on the weekends go out to the desert you know run the trails climb the mountains in comfort with a cooled seat satellite radio too many features to list really guys it's a it's a fantastic place to be and it's one of the reasons i love this truck driving impressions my apologies i'm not actually behind the wheel i had some technical problems yesterday when i was in the angeles national forest at rower flat ohv this recreational area it's really really great place to go take your atvs your off-road vehicles your jeeps your whatever and of course we had a lot of fun with the raptor as well checking out the trails climbing up some fire roads and of course doing some baja style driving 
and the, the highway driving was illuminating as well. But let's first talk about off-road, the reason you would want to buy this particular truck. And I have to say that I'm absolutely blown away. I've been up to this area before with other F-150s. Most of them had the FX4 package. Even though it's got four-wheel drive and locking differentials with the FX4 package, it's really kind of a jarring experience and you have to go slow to maneuver around the rough road surfaces and the divots and this and that. You know, you could have to be a little conservative when you're driving with such a big truck like this. The Raptor is a completely different experience. Yes, you have to be a little bit careful, but with this adjustable suspension that you can set up, a magnetic ride suspension, Fox shocks, huge, huge shocks, and they're adjustable. You got normal mode, sport mode, which kind of stiffen things up and reduces body roll when you're kind of on the street and in corners, and you've got your off-road mode. This thing with its long suspension travel, beefy, fat tires, it just soaks up every single bump. And what's amazing about that, what that means is that you get to increase your speed. I was able to drive basically twice as fast in this Raptor as I was in previous F-150s. Now I should say that I have not yet driven the Tremor. I was supposed to earlier this year, but there was a snafu with another media outlet. I think they damaged it in some way. Anyway, I should be getting it in the next couple weeks. What the Raptor does better than anything is that it allows you to drive almost like you're on the road even when you're off the road and I think it's a remarkable suspension it is my favorite suspension out of all of the kind of standard F-150s the lightning suspension I did get to ride in that and that has an independent rear suspension and that was super super smooth I need to spend a little bit more time with it to kind of compare and contrast now that I've driven this. And so what's particularly fascinating about the Raptor suspension is that not only is it amazing off-road as we just described, but all of that performance translates into on-road comfortability. This is one of the smoothest riding trucks that you can buy today. One of the kind of uh, torture tests, so to speak, that I do for truck reviews is that I drive all these big trucks, the small trucks or whatever, up to the west side of Los Angeles. It's a particularly tough section of highway because there's lots of different kind of expansion joints between the slabs of cement and concrete. It's a bit like if you've ever been on a highway in the northeast that's had freezing and unfreezing, you get the washboard kind of effect. Same thing happens in the west side of Los Angeles and trucks really, really get get upset by this. It causes them to bounce and sway and do all sorts of things. And so it's an it's a interesting area for on-road testing for trucks. And the Raptor passed with flying colors. I tested it out between normal sport and off-road. And you could put this thing in off-road and just cruise down the highway. And, it, and look, you know that there are bumps, but it's just the sm it's like riding in a 60s Lincoln. You know what I mean? It is absolutely great. And if you want to go around corners a little faster, pop it into sport mode, normal mode for everyday cruising. This thing soaks up speed bumps, by the way. It's speed bumps that would destroy my Mustang. This thing just kind of launches over. It is absolutely the real deal. And one of the reasons that you want to drive this car is because of the suspension. Also, the brakes are really fantastic for a truck this size. No problem slowing down. I really like those. The steering feeling, the steering wheel, it's it's a little bit light, it's electronic, they all are these days, and the power levels are frankly fantastic. It's obviously not the most anymore, it's not the greatest ever, but this level of power moves this truck at a reasonably quick pace, and it's all you would need to do to do some serious off-roading, some serious Baja-style desert running. It is absolutely well-sorted, and it's the right amount of power. And yet, despite having a great level of power and performance, I really, really personally, subjectively, dislike the way this thing sounds. To me, it sounds like a straight piped infinity, which, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just it just sounds like like buzzing bees. It, it sounds like angry hornets. It's just a um it's not that I don't think it fits the truck. I just dislike the resonance in the tone. And what's particularly frustrating about it is that when you're driving it, you can put the truck into quiet mode, which is fantastic, but anytime you mash the pedal, the valves seem to open up. I'm assuming that's some type of performance thing. The valves open up and you get full, loud, raspy, batty, buzzing bees uh, again. And um, it's just not a tone that I like, which is why I really wish Ford could have figured out a way to put a V8 in it. Still sounds good. Now, obviously, the Raptor R is coming later, and the rumor is that's going to have the GT500's 5.2 liter Predator V8 motor in it, which would obviously be amazing. But to me, I, I don't know if you necessarily need all of that. Yes, it's great to have the bragging rights versus the T-Rex, but this is a great level of power. So I kind of wish that the, you know, maybe the, the Godzilla motor from the Super Duties, or if they did the Coyote, but with like a small amount of boost or turbo or supercharger, whatever, you know, Whipple, Roush, whatever. I mean, of course, that would put it up to 700 horsepower anyway. This truck would be perfect if it had a V8. The other potential downside of the Raptor is, of course, economy. This is a huge truck, 
with a twin turbocharged V6 engine, high output engine, making a lot of power, big wheels, no aerodynamics, and you will be shocked to learn that the gas mileage is uh, kind of terrible. Yesterday during my drive, so some mixed bumper to bumper traffic, mixed highway speeds at like 70 to 80 miles an hour, a full day of off-roading and returning back and running a few errands, the computer says that I got 13 miles per gallon. Around town though, when I'm just running errands, picking up the little one from school, heading to the grocery store, doing those very small day-to-day -day things, I was getting more around seven or eight miles per gallon. Anyway, so just be aware that if you are buying this massive truck with its massive 36 gallon fuel tank, yes, you get about 400 miles of range, uh, just be aware that it's going to cost you at the pump. There we have it, folks. The third generation Ford F-150 Raptor. What do you guys think about this vehicle? Would you buy one? Tell me in the comments down below or if you on our forums on Ford truck enthusiasts in our forum thread. I think a lot of people go into and they judge a truck like this based on whether or not it's the best thing ever and the craziest, amazing, most crazy truck ever. And in a world where it no longer has the top specs of every particular truck that's on the road, you know, I can understand why some people are disappointed. But from a driver's perspective, this is one of the best trucks that Ford has ever made, hands down. It is powerful, it is sporty, it is luxurious, it is practical, and of course you can take it off-road and do all sorts of crazy adventures. It's probably the most well-rounded, expensive truck that Ford makes. Part Lincoln Continental, part Mustang, part F-150, and of course, you know, part Baja desert running off-roader. It is an extraordinary truck even though it is no longer the most powerful version. Still, I absolutely love this truck. Outside of it being kind of a little bit too wide and kind of obscene for city life, again, not a criticism, just a kind of, it's a very wide truck. So outside of that, I mean, this would be something that I would want to buy. I love, this, I love the seats. The suspension is extraordinary. It's powerful. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about it is, again, it's a little bit too wide for, for my personal needs, which of course doesn't affect you. And I dislike the V6 engine. If Ford could somehow, in some perfect universe, if they could put the Godzilla motor in here, put a supercharged Coyote in here, you know, something that's more affordable than going all the way up to the Predator motor, you know, that would be the perfect Raptor, something that is this price but offers a V8 or 5,000 bucks more, whatever the, the thing would be, but uh, absolutely blown away. It may not have all the hype anymore, you guys, but the Raptor is still the real deal. It is a fantastic, fantastic truck. Thank you so much to Ford for sending it to me, and thank you guys for watching. If you stuck all the way to the end, I'm sure there's one or two of you. Anyway, I hope you all are well and safe, and we will see you on the next video. Cheers. Cheers.